Harkening back to the arcade era of video games where Streets of Rage 2 and Final Fight were all the rage, Super Punch Patrol tickles or rather punches you right in the nostalgia. It pays tribute to the times of running through a video game along with a friend all on a stack of quarters. Super Punch Patrol has a story as shallow as pretty much any other beat-em-up game for the early 90s. You play as Police Chief Anders Punch, a cop that gets fed up with the amount of crime and violence in his city. Desperate to bring justice to his town, he and his fellow police officers Selma and Nils decide to take on the crime syndicate with their bare fists. It's a bare-bones story that's meant to just give some sort of foundation to the gameplay. Though, especially in 2020, perhaps a story about the police going around beating up people isn't the most well-timed plot for a video game. Super Punch Patrol is as straightforward as it gets when it comes to beat em up gameplay. You have a regular punch attack and a special attack. The special attack lands more damage with a wider hit range, though at the cost of some health. It's a useful move, but of course it comes at a cost. Now even though you really only have one regular attack, you can use it in combination with other moves to modify it. For example, you can jump kick by jumping and hitting the regular attack button. Likewise, you can perform a dash attack by running and attacking at the same time. The control scheme is simple and so is the gameplay. It follows the genre's traditional gameplay of walking to the right of the screen as enemies come at you in different waves. As mentioned earlier, we can play as one of three officers and while they all control the same, their movesets are ever so slightly different. Across the multiple stages are barrels that contain some useful accessories, health items, and bonus items that help your score. The pieces of cake regenerate your health, while the diamonds raise your final score. The accessories come in the forms of weapons you can pick up and attack enemies with, may it be a knife or a bat. Because our characters are so simplistic in design, a lot of the variety in the gameplay comes from the enemies you face. Enemies come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, from the well-dressed man slide kicking you, the tall women trying to grab and spank you, and the swole dude named Timothy spin kicking you into next week. These enemies were entertaining to fight, even despite the reskins of some of them later on. The standout fights were always the boss fights that awaited me at the end of every level. These bosses usually followed a pattern that was quick to learn but still provided a bit of challenge compared to standard enemies. Now while you can play this game alone, it's truly meant to be played with a friend. It's designed around local co-op with enemies coming from both sides of the screen. The enemy placement most of the time felt somewhat frustrating when playing alone. These enemies, when crowded around you, break your attack animations and simply overrun you. Playing with a friend feels more balanced while still providing a challenge. Having a friend play with you splits up your revives, though you're still able to earn more by earning enough points at a given level. Across the two hour campaign, I enjoyed playing through a simple but entertaining beat em up game with a friend, but also felt how shallow the gameplay felt throughout the whole time. This is a game that purposely went the simple route when designing its combat, and though that's appreciated by some, I felt the design choices drag at some times. It also lacks online co-op, something that feels integral for a modern co-op game with limited replay value outside of high scores. Where this game truly shines is in its unique art style that sort of has become the developer's staple at this point. First becoming well known through this developer's previous titles, Gunman Clive, this sketch 3D model look cloaks over Super Punch Patrol's gameplay. It's vibrant and tasteful. Playing either in dock or handheld mode, characters always popped having a contrasting red and blue color compared to the black and white backdrops. It oddly felt perfectly themed for the Nintendo Switch. I do want to note though, because of how simplistic the color choices were for the backgrounds, the attention to detail for these level environments were sometimes lost to being camouflaged. One level has us in the sewers, another in the streets, and one even on a bridge while riding skateboards. They're diverse levels, but more often than not, they just sort of faded into the background behind the action. There's a nice mix of fast-paced techno songs that play behind Super Punch Patrol's campaign. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't EDM music or anything like that, but a solid collection of beats that are more like ambient music to the action on screen. They mix in with the somewhat retro-sounding punches and thrashes that come from enemies being pummeled or someone being slammed to the ground. I think those were the sound choices I enjoyed the most. It truly felt like I was playing a retro beat-em-up game again. Super Punch Patrol pays tribute to those days of playing beat em up arcade machines. It's an entertaining but simple co op beat em up with a few unlockables in the forms of costumes and very little replay value outside of bettering your score. It's tailored toward those with a sense of nostalgia for the genre under a beautiful presentation that's a staple of this developer's previous games. Sadly, it does lack online co op, and with it being a short game, there isn't much replay value outside of just getting a better score on the online leaderboard, but I guess for a $4.99 price tag, you can't expect too much. 